Hi, Danielle. Sorry, it's Carmi. You're muted. There we go. Can you guys hear me now? And I'm going to just... You're back, Danielle. I'm back. Okay. Some new stuff today um, in our setup. So um, thank you guys for, uh, we're, I'm going to restart my intro here. I was just going to say happy Tuesday because it's, um, we're usually with you on Friday for our teaching, but this is a special week with Michael. So world of jewelry making. And so we have two classes for you today. And then we also have a class on Saturday and it's at the same time as this one. So um, we have so many new things to share. And one of the things I wanted to just highlight was I've updated my wall with some of the new products that have just gone in for the uh, July reset. So if you've been into your local Michaels recently, you've probably seen a wall of crystal that's Czech crystal made in the Czech Republic, beautiful preciosa crystal and many sizes, um, including eight millimeter by kings and rounds. So um, covering a lot more colors than there that were there before. So the sky is the limit. There's so much opportunity to create now. Also some really cool new check glass strands, waxed cord, flat backs, my favorite thread for making fringe and loom designs. And there's also felt for some bead embroidery. So, I mean, we've got so much coming. I don't even know where to start to share how many exciting things we've got on the way. Um, but um, I thought today we'll start with Crystal. So um, what I have on the mat is uh, today's project. And it is a really fun, beginner friendly, stitch design and it has like um I've designed it to work with just one strand so uh, you can just go and grab one strand of six millimeter bicones and any color you want and then grab one tube of seed beads and um, I'm using metallic silver you don't have to use the same color you can use any uh, color you want it's in size 8 -0. that's the important part that you get an 8 -0 size um, but like always, um, I, you typically all get a lot of questions of, you know, can I use this size or that size? And my answer is always probably like you can try it and see if it works because the cool thing about seed beading is the structure of a stitch can sometimes work with different size beads. You just have to maybe adjust the counts or maybe adjust the size of the beads relative to each other. Like if you go up a size in bicone, maybe you go up a size in seed bead or vice versa going down to like a four millimeter bicone, maybe work with some 11.0. So try these things, see if you like it. That's how these things get discovered. If somebody sat down and just tried it, right? So I always say, go for it. Um, and then um, I'm gonna go ahead and switch so you can see my mat really quick. And what I've got here is I've got the um, handout and this is also in the chat for anyone who didn't um, get a chance to download it already. It was there at the sign up screen, but it has, a summary, which we've we've always tell people who are new, this is something that alone, it would be hard to follow. The video alone would be hard to follow, but together they're kind of just what you need. And then later this becomes a memory jogger for class. And of course, class is also recorded. Um, so we have to go through, you know, the design in an hour. So often what I have are worked ahead samples. So I show step one and then I have a step two ready to go. That's at that stage. So uh, that's our plan for today. So once again, you just need one pack of crystals and if you want to make about this length, um, you will use all but one crystal. So that one crystal can become a little charm if you want. And that brings me to findings. So for findings, the essential thing is you're gonna need a toggle and you can use any toggle you like. Today, I'm gonna be using the Sterling Silver uh, two pack toggles. There's another, um, another toggle in this collection that's bigger. And so I included both in the handout. So, in in case you like the bigger toggle, but it only comes with one per pack. So I thought I would show examples with both. So you can choose the one you like best. And, and again, everything I'm using is all right here in the handout. And if you're looking in the app or on the website, you can type these numbers in and it will bring up that product. Um, and then let's see. So if you wanted to do the little charm, which is optional, you might want to grab some jump rings and a head pin. And this is a one inch head pin and a four millimeter jump ring. But this is all, you know, you can you can work with different sizes and it'll still work. You're going to need beading needles. So a size 10 or a size 12 beading needle, hard beading needle. And you're going to need some wildfire in 0 0.006. And um, I used frost on all of my designs here. For the start today, I'm going to use a color you can see a little better. I'm going to use the black color. And I was thinking I'll work with the, maybe the pink today because that is going to stand out really nice. 
Um, the three colors you see on my mat are highlighted in the handout in case you really like those and you want to use the same. Those are all in the handout. And so with that, I'm just going to jump in. Let's get started. So I'm going to move these away. So um, some of you guys will already be familiar with the stitch. It's right angle weave. It's a very well-known, you know, um, tried and true favorite for beaters. And what it does is it creates little segments where each segment that's built um, shares one bead from the former segment. And you can do these with lots of different counts. Sometimes people use four, sometimes you can use three. Um, this is a, a right angle weave that's made with a three count. So something a little different, but still, you know, still beginner friendly. And I'm going to be cutting a pretty long strand of thread. So you can add thread, but if you would like to just cut about a wingspan, for me, that's 60, 65, maybe 70 inches or so. You should have enough to finish the bracelet with that. So that's what I'm going to do here. So for me, about a wingspan. And I didn't show this a second ago, but you'll need just a couple little things here. Um, you'll need some scissors. And in the handout, I've given the part number for these scissors. These scissors are really good for cutting the recollections precision scissor and they cut the wildfire really nicely. A lot of beading thread um, can be difficult to cut. So finding a scissor that works is cool. Flush cutters is something else that'll work though, if you're looking for something. And then before you thread your needle, you wanna take the end of that thread and flatten it with your chain nose pliers. And so I've just got a pair of bent nose that was, was on the top of my tools. And I'm just flattening that. And that's going to make threading my needle easier. So anyone new to beading, that's one of the things we always kind of struggle with is getting those needles threaded. And this will make that a little bit easier. And I'm using a size 10 hard beading needle. 12 will work fine too. You can use either. Got that threaded. And then just bring down, you know, bring down a little more than you usually do because this is a pretty long strand we're working with. You can always work it up again meaning slide it down as you get to, you know, you get short, you can slide the uh, amount of thread down. So here, let's get these size eight seed beads out. And again, this is metallic silver. And then I've, I've grabbed an AB, um, is it rose? Well, yeah, no, it's a, yeah, rose Aurora Borealis. Really pretty color. I haven't done um, one of these colors yet. So I've used this in the rounds, but not in the bicone. I'm going to go ahead and just open up both strands because I know I'm going to need them. Slide that off and get my little piles ready. Okay. So the way this works, and again, you don't have to remember everything I'm showing because it's, it's right here in the handout, is we're just going to start by making the, the first little pop. So it's just going to have, you'll start with an S8. I call, um, I call the seed beads in the handout S8 for size 8 check seed bead and then B6 for the six millimeter bicone. So we'll string an S8, a B6, and then we'll go around repeating that and then go back through and reinforce. So let's do that really quick and get our seed bead. And when um, in a beading instructions, when you see leave a tail, what they're talking about is at the point where you, um, you leave this amount here, in this design, you're gonna to wanna to leave about 15 inches because you're gonna use that to attach and reinforce the clasp on the starting side. So about 15 inches for me, that happens to be the length of this mat. So I usually use that as my measure. So I'm just gonna pinch that spot and then bring on the rest of my beads. And what you're always gonna be going for is three of each bead type. So I want three seed beads and three bicones. Slide that down. Still marking my spot here. And so the next thing you want to do is with your working side, come back through all the beads. Just making sure I got through all of them. And again, I'm going to just hold the spot that's my tail, the 15 inch mark there on my tail. tighten and then go back through the first S8 and then when you get to the spot go ahead and just take the tail and that working thread and pull it tight 
So this is what you're going for right here. Sets of three. Okay, so the next one we're gonna do, build on that. And the next, so the, the unique thing about this design is every new segment is gonna share a bead, but it's not the same bead every time. Every other segment changes. So this first one's gonna share the S8, the size eight seed bead. So we'll start by stringing a crystal, a size eight, a crystal, a size eight, and a crystal. And we'll go back through it. And before I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, make sure that I've reinforced. And it looks like I did, actually. I've got two strands going through there. I think I did that all in one swoop in the beginning. But I wanted to highlight that if anybody's having trouble where it's like loosening on you, just go through it again. Go through your, we call it follow the thread path, but you'll just go through the beads again, and that should solve any issues with it being loose when you stitch it. And sometimes you'll you'll need to do that as you work up the, the design. Um, it's kind of hit or miss, like sometimes I feel like it needs it, sometimes it doesn't, and I really just kind of feel my way through that. If I've got a spot that's loose, I'll go back through it. Um, but for the most part, reinforcing usually solves most of the woes in beading, so I always want to mention that. Okay, so let's pick up the next set of beads. So we need a bicone and a seed bead. And we'll want to do that so that we have three bicones and three seed beads. And you're you're probably wondering, well, where's the third seed bead? It's right here. That's our third. We're going to share it with the, the last one. So we've got three and three. And then the only other thing you want to pay attention to when you slide it down Go ahead and bring it to meet the seed bead. And then you want to go through that seed bead in the round, right? You want to bring it around and go through it. You want to head in the side that the tail is coming out of. And then pull tight. And you should get this great little pop, just like that. All right, so once you're there, a couple things I wanted to note. We're going to leave the tail behind right here. There's the tail side. Just leave it here at the end. We talk about what to do with it, and the instructions are written assuming that your tail was left here. So um, you can just ignore it for now. We'll get we'll get to that at the end. But what we want to do is we want to bring our working side, this side, to exit from the top icon. And let me bring the illustration back over and show you what I mean. So we just joined this, and right now I'm I'm in this C bead right here. What I want to do is travel through the next bicone, the next seed bead, and the next bicone so that I'm exiting from that. And then we'll do a add here where we'll start with the seed bead, a bicone, and a seed bead, bicone, seed bead, and go back through the bicone. And that, in a nutshell, is the whole first part of the bracelet, basically. So let's do that a bunch of times. Let's go through here. Hold tight. Continue through that icon that's on the top there. Let's see, you'll get something that looks like that. And now we'll need a seed bead, a bicon, a seed bead, a bicon, and a seed bead. So now we're three seed beads. And if we count the one that's left behind here, that's three bicons. And again, we're going to go through the side that our working thread is not coming out of. We don't have a tail this time. We're just going through the, the side that the working thread is you know, opposite to. And you'll know you did it right because you'll get a ring just like that. I want that to join into a little ring shape. And so I'll go up through here. I'm using pretty tight tension, um, meaning I'm pulling pretty hard on the thread as I go. To travel to exit from that top seed bead. And so now we'll do a repeat of a repeat of this one. We'll need to add the bicone, seed bead, bicone, seed bead, bicone, and go back through it. A little circle like that. Just this one. Whoop. <laughs> it jumped away. Let's get it. So there's the three bicones and our three seed beads, if you count this one here. And so again, going through the seed bead um, from the opposite side of where that thread's exiting, 
so that you get a circle to the circle form in here. And there's our next segment. And the really cool thing about this design that you'll see after we get through this step is that um, the finishing coming back down and adding the sides is another strengthening um, step to the bracelet, making it a little stronger. Because right now you may find that, it's, you know, maybe has a little bit of gaps. I've got one right here, just a little bit, I'm trying to pull as tight as I can. But if you're getting those, again, you can just, just go back through the beads or um, just try to make it as tight as you can. And we'll catch that when we add our embellishment on the side. So let's do the next one. The next one, of course, it's going to switch back and forth every time. So we just finished this one. So now we're going to do this one again. Seed bead, bicone, seed bead, bicone, seed bead. Let's grab another one of those. So there's those. And there's our third bicone. Come back through it. And if you can get through in one swoop, get to that sea bead. So um, this is in a nutshell all of all of the, the, the main part of building in the bracelet. So I want to make sure everyone's got this. We're still doing really good on time. So I was just thinking I would check in and just take a glance at the chat in case I missed any comments, questions. Um, and if we should restart and show any of this again before moving on to the next part. And the next part being, let me show you really quick, is you would use up all the beads in your pile, except for one. So I've got that one somewhere here. I can't remember where I put it. <laughs> this one has a leftover green one. Hi, Danielle. Uh, sidebar hey. has been very good today. Um, not too okay. many questions. But as always, the first round is the hardest. So yeah. if you could definitely just show the start one more time, that then we'll be confident everyone can do it after the class. Cool. Let's do that again. And how does how do you feel about the pink color? Is it easy to see? Should I switch it or it's doing good? The pink is looking good for me. OK. But I'll just stick with that. And um, I'm just going to borrow the thread that I've got and just start over here. So. It's not the full length, but we're just showing that first step really quick. So um, again, what you'd want to do is pick up a seed bead here and a bicone. And you're going for three of each bead type. And so in this case, I've got three seed beads and three bicones. And you bring that down, leave about a 15 inch tail. So measuring to the end of your thread, just pinch that spot, bring that down, and go back through all those beads again. And you're coming in through the tail side. So here's the tail over here. This is our working side coming out of the beads where we strung them. And we just came around and went back through all of them. And when you do that, you'll know you got it because it'll make a ring shape. It'll kind of do this to you when you first get to through the beads until you go back one more time through that first seed bead. And you're crossing uh, where the tail is. And so what you'll get is a little ring and you pull tight. So we go in for that. And then just leave the tail aside, ignore it for now. We'll come back to it. And from here, you'll want to pick up a bicone and a seed bead. Bicone, seed bead, and a bicone. So three bicones and then just two seed beads because we're going to use this one as our third. And same thing, we're, we're exiting from this side. This is my working side coming out here. We're going to come around and go through the opposite side, which on your first round will have the tail exiting from it. So you can do an extra little tighten, kind of handy. And you'll get that. And now we just want to travel to exit from the top bicone. So you want to go through all these beads. Go through this one. Whoop. 
mine jumped. Sorry about that. Let me get back into that spot. So we went through this bicone here and continue through the seed bead and then the top bicone here. So I'm just leaving the tail like, like we're, we're we're just going to worry about that later. And I'm over here at the top bicone. So now we're going to switch to adding seed bead first, then the bicone. And that's just because I'm exiting from a bicone. So my next bead needs, you know, to be a seed bead. And now I need three seed beads. And my third bicone is the one I'm exiting. So let's come back through that bicone. And pull tight. So you get essentially what that is, is this right here. And we're going to weave to exit from that top seed bead now. So let's just keep going. Through all of those, tighten it up. And ready to repeat the um, segment that looks like this one. So now we're going to repeat bicone, CB bicone, CB bicone. That first one. So just like that. And we're sharing the CB that's there as our third CB. So we'll come back through in that direction. And just tighten that down. And then traveling to exit from the top bicone. So let's do one more, one more segment and then let's talk about what to do next. So let's go through and add the seed bead. And in this case, I'm just going for three seed beads. I got two bicones because I'm exiting from a bicone. So that's the one I'm sharing. Back through and tighten that down. And that's pretty much it. So you would just keep going. You keep going for the entire um, length of you know crystal that you have, except for just one bead. And so um, when you do that, you will get a strand that let me get you some length for you know anyone who wants to know the measures of that. Your beaded length is going to be six inches. So um, once you put the toggle on, uh, you're looking at um, something that's closer to seven. So that's a pretty good size bracelet, but it's not adjustable. And so I always tell folks um, two ways you can make it a little, you know, a little di different is if you're using a bigger toggle, the larger one that's in the handout, let me show you really quick. If I put those in there, metallic silver. I think I put the 15 millimeter one. So that's the big one. That's this one right here. And it's the um, sterling silver 15 millimeter toggle. There's also the smaller ones that you can choose. They're nine millimeter in size. So that's going to make a difference in your length. So it's something to think about. It's one way you can adjust the length. Another thing you can do is you can just use chain and um, like a lobster claw. You can um, use any clasp you want, really. The way that it attaches is it's stitched directly on. So if you're going to use chain, maybe use one that is soldered, like a closed jump ring or a closed chain, and then just go directly into your lobster claw, because that will usually have a also a closed ring to stitch to. Um, but an open jump ring um, you can do, but you want to maybe use an oval-shaped one so that this thread does not pull out of your seam in the jump ring. So just something to think about. I'll just be using one of the little mini nine millimeter toggles today um, to show finishing this one, but the steps will be exactly the same and you can really change up the clasp that you're, that you're using. Okay, so um, any, if there's any questions about that, let me know. I just tried to make it as understandable as I could. 
Um, but yeah, sometimes putting on the clasp is, is the most uh, exciting part of our designs, right? Always. <laughs> and I'm going to try to bring my camera down a little bit, a little bit close. And let's see, I'm feeling like this color might be a little better. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Just looking at my screen and it seems a little bit dark and hard to see. All right. And so um, we have finished and we've ended. This is part is a little bit important. If you're going to add length, you want to end with a segment that has the bicam as the last beat. So you want to end with one of these segments. And that's important for if you like the way we done the, we've done the class. The way the class goes on is it comes out of the uh, of the edge by cone and just kind of hugs it. And so I'm gonna show how we did that. And it's um, helpful if both of your ends, the starting end right now, your tail is gonna be like right here. So you're just gonna weave up and do that with this one. Let me show you on this one where that is. My tail thread is right here, coming out of that bead. And this is my working thread and it's exiting from the top by cone. All right, so all of what I'm about to show you is on the next page. So exiting from this bicone here, we're gonna string uh, basically three seed beads to start and then two as our like extension there and then three more and come back through and we'll reinforce that one time. And this is another area where you can add some length because for example, even though you wanna kind of preserve the three here, you can add more here. And in a lot of my designs, I did that. Let me show you on this one. Um, I added three on here to make my toggle have more wiggle. So the amount that you add here is adjustable. You can make that longer to give yourself more length too. So let's do that. Let's grab the seed beads back here. Let's get our toggle ready. This is my ring side. It doesn't actually matter which side you put on first. You can do either. And so let's get our three seed beads first. I'm breaking this up to show you the structure. It's actually with string five, and I think the instructions say to string five, but I just want to show what it what we're doing really. So we're we've got the three here. We're just coming up around the bead like that. And then here's the two that are going to be a kind of like the branch. String that down. And now you want to bring on your clasp or closed jump ring or lobster claw. Whatever you're using, just come through the ring on it. Bring that down. And when you get there, you want to go back through just the last two seed beads. So you've got the, the toggle ring going, those five seed beads there. Just kind of isolate those two and come back through them. And then pull tight. And when you do that, you'll get, you know, something like this, a little gappy but just keep pulling and it'll all tighten up for you just like that. And so that's what you're going for. And string three more beads of the little uh, size eight seed beads. Get those on there. And we're gonna go through the bicone from the other side. Just coming through that. And there's another opportunity to tighten if you need to, you can hold the toggle bar or toggle ring and just tighten it up. So it's going to look like that. And then you'll want to reinforce that at least once. And to do that, all you do is you just kind of follow the existing thread path. So get back through those first three. Sometimes you can get through all four or five. And it just kind of changes every time. Got one more here. So I'm back up exiting from that top CB there. Let's go through the toggle ring, a little uh, jump ring at the bottom there. And then back through those seed beads. So now we're exiting from those two and we just wanna come down the side that we didn't go through yet. So that's going to be, for me, that's this side. So 
So those next three. And then here's where something's going to change. So we attach that, we reinforced it. And now we're going to add the embellishment. And do you see that little gap we've got? My thread's exiting right here. And then I've got that other size eight seed bead. And when I had this stitch design in my head, this was it. This was the finish. But then I saw those little gaps and I thought, hey, wouldn't it be cool? We put a little size eight seed bead in between each one. And the thread path is really refreshing because you can go down one side and back the other. And it kind of makes like a little infinity motion. So let me show you that. But I wanted to mention that if you if you like what you have here, you can say, hey, I'm done. <laughs> Go repeat that on the other side. You got it. But if you want to do something extra, um, this is the um, embellishing step. Okay, so let's grab a size 8 seed bead. And again, all of this is in the handout. It shows you where we're exiting and how we reinforced. And now I'm here exiting from those three, see? And I'm gonna add one bead and then go through the next eight out. You see that travel? Now we're gonna travel through and just add an eight out to get to the other side. So let's do that. And I went ahead and continued through the bicone that's next. So it just makes a little pop right there. We will have to repeat that you know, on the way back, but now we're exiting from this bicone right here. So I'm gonna just continue along with the, the structure of right angle weave, you're kind of making turns every time, right? So I'm over here now, and exit from here. Grab another one. And so what I'm doing is basically putting an 80 seed bead in between these gaps. And the way the stitch is structured means we kind of got to meander through. So the next logical turn here, of course, is to go through that size eight seed bead and then come over here. And that put me over here. And then I'll travel back through here. I'm just following that path. And it's all shown right here in a little more clarity. Um, we just added this one. We traveled through here, came up here, we added that one, and now we're going to come down, go through this one, come up here, out that one, and so on, until we get to the other side. And it goes really fast. So once you, you kind of get the idea of where you're going, it's also easy to fix. If you've made a mistake, you can always pull that thread out. It's also... Um, I think kind of uh, one of those mistakes that you see in the moment, it's not like some stitches where you don't notice right away. So you'll notice right there in the moment if it doesn't look right. But there's our 8 -0. And this is making it pretty strong. Use gentler tension here. You don't want to cinch up your length. Um, it won't do, um, it won't make it too short, but if you go really tight, it will take off maybe, uh, I don't know, a hair under a quarter inch or so in length if you go really tight. So just really gentle here. The mere presence of the thread is gonna give you extra strength. You don't have to pull tight to achieve that. And here's the uh, next 8-0. And another thing you could do is you could experiment with different colors and you could also experiment with different little beads. An eight millimeter, sorry, an 8.0, size 8.0 CV is what we're working with right now. And if you wanted, if you had access to a three millimeter bead, a three millimeter bead would fit right here instead of another seed bead. So you can try that and give it a little bit of like a, kind of like a little pop, right? Extra colors. You can just switch the color of your 8.0 seed bead. And then one other idea I wanted to share while I'm just kind of going through this flow here is that if you have a lot of leftover bicones, like I have kind of like a little pile because not all my projects use a whole strand, but then it's not like enough for, maybe you can make an earring or something, but I have a pile of a bunch of different colors. And I thought how cool it would be to mix up the colors and do like a, maybe even like an ombre version of this bracelet using my leftover bicones. So if you have those and you want to use them, give that a try. I'm almost to the end, see how quick it goes? Not bad, it does not take long. A 
one more over here and through the center. Now I'm back where my tail is. I'm back exiting from that same spot where the tail was left behind. And I've done one side of the bracelet's embellishments. See how you got one side, one side, one side. Isn't this really cute? I mean, it's just really cool looking and that thread path is so fun. It's an enjoyable stitch up, right? It's something that actually I feel like is um, repeatable because you like doing it. So from here, I'm gonna use, I have a lot of working thread left. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go up through. If you were running short on working thread now, you could use your um, tail thread to make the clasp. I've got a lot, so I'm gonna just keep going. But there's something um, you can do there if you're running short. And I'm gonna get to where I'm exiting from the bicone. So I'm exiting from that top bicone there. And then we're just gonna repeat what we did on the other side with our toggle bar. So here's my toggle bar. And let's get three. And then again, those three are gonna just hug the side of the bicone. Get those on there. And in this case, I'm gonna go with three more to give my toggle bar some room to wiggle. So now I'm gonna do three instead of the two that's shown in the handout. And I'm also working with a smaller toggle, so I wanna make sure that a little extra length can't hurt. So there's that. And let's remembering that I added three this time. So I'm gonna go back through three there and hold that bar and pull everything down to meet what you got going there. And three more are needed. So get those three more there. And let's take a look at where we are. We've got the toggle. We're exiting back through here. And we're just gonna go through the bike from that opposite side. There you go. So let's finish the other side. Um, and then I'm gonna show you one last little extra special thing at the end that we're gonna need the tail, th tail thread for. So again, I'm just leaving the tail thread behind right where we left it at the beginning, coming out of that 8 seed bead. Just gonna leave it there. If you used it to do this stitch, just leave it wherever you left off and I'll, I'll show you how to get where you're going. But let's go back through the class one more time, give it one more. We'll reinforce it one more time with the tail thread. So I'm just going to go through it twice. And then we'll be headed back the other way. And sometimes it can be tricky once you've made a little this little turn to tell which side you were coming out of and going through. So let me show you a way you can figure that out. When we were going up this way, we had two threads, and now I've got how many here? You should be able to see it, or get a magnifier and just check. And it'll still work, but I kind of, I wanted to preserve the side that I ended up on, because it just makes it flow better. But one way you can tell if you're not sure, in addition to just looking at the thread, is just take a look at where we're headed. So lay it out, <clears throat> and you remember we did one side, we embellished one side, and so I know I want to embellish this side next because I'm going to travel through here and do this side and then do this side and this side. So what I don't want to do is go down this side and then end up going the same way back. Does that make sense? So just take a quick look and make sure that the way you traveled up, right? We traveled up this way, you traveled up this way. We did this. We made the attachment here. We came back and we want to make sure that when we do this, that we're headed the right direction so that we can do the right side. And you'll see it. You'll see it when you're working on this. You'll say, okay, I'm looking at this right now from where I'm at here. And I know that I wanna be in a position to reinforce right here to get that little embellishment. So I wanna come down this side because it's gonna bring me through the right direction, right? And I'm gonna add the CB here and then travel through this one, travel through this one, this one, and it puts me here. If you get yourself in a situation where it's not the right spot, just go back. You just bring your thread right back out, take the needle off and come back out and just go back up and go the other way. And you'll, you'll be okay to do that. 
and that's happened to me before because I was going fast, you know. But we'll go, go ahead and add that seed bead there. And there's one side done. We still have this gap over here. Don't worry, our tail's going to take care of that then. But we've got this one here. And from where I am now, I'm exiting this bicom. I go through the center seed bead here and the next bicone and the next seed bead there. Bring that down and let's get the seed bead on. All right, so this is just the same thing we were doing before. I'm gonna zip through it so we can get to the end. But now it's just, it's finishing everything from the other side. So we did that. And now we're just heading back. So the stitch path is left, right, left, right, left, right. It's going back and forth and back and forth. And we're adding a seed bead in between each of those gaps there. So I'm just getting through side by side and see it's just knitting up everything together. And I've still got that gap over here, but I'm not worried about it yet. We're gonna fix that right at the end. Just keep going. And I'll be interested to hear from you guys if you enjoy this stitch because it's really, I think for me, it's actually really seasonal. And I get a lot of ideas when I'm doing kind of the repetitive flow type of stitching that we're doing here. That's where my mind kind of comes up with stuff. I don't know if it's the same for you guys, but even like when I'm teaching live, I'm, I'm thinking of things that I wish I had thought of before and put in the design, right? Because there's so many places you can take this. I'm already picturing an earring, you know, that kind of stuff. So just through this one, we're almost to the end. We have one more little add here. And then I'll have a chance to explain what all those little arrows mean at the end of the handout. All right, so here's where we are. I've got my working thread exiting from that last center and I'm exactly where I wanna be to put an 80 C bead right there. And then just all we gotta do is reinforce and weave in on that side. Back here, we left our tail in that same spot. We left it hanging out, exiting from that bead. And what we're gonna do with that one is bring it up and fill that gap with an 80C bead right there. So pretty easy. Um, let's do that. Let's do it really quick. We got lots of time so we can show both sides. Um, but I just wanted to show that it's kind of, I don't know, it's serendipitous, I feel like, because it ends up in the same spot exactly where you want it to be for both the tail and the working thread without having to weave around. So how cool is that? And just go up through. And I didn't do that on purpose. It was totally accidental, but then yes, that worked. It's awesome. All right. And so here's the 80 seed bead. And then just go through those three on the clasp. And there we go. Everything looks really, really good. So I'm gonna go and reinforce. I'm gonna go up through the two here. Just zip through that really quick. Go through the toggle ring there. Let's flip it over. Back through those two. And we'll 
we'll just head down the other side. Okay. And so for weaving in, all you need to do to weave in is you can go around through, you can, I might even just go through this one more time just to say that it's tight. But you can weave in any way you'd like. You can go through the existing thread paths. You can even tie little half hitch knots if you like to do that. I can show how to do that really quick. Let me head back through and back down the other side. So I actually reinforced that one four times. And that was just because I noticed there was a little bit of gapping on one side. I felt like I wanted to tighten that up. So I was there and I could, so I did. And so now I'm back here. And now is your chance to just reinforce anywhere you feel like it needs it. You can go stitch down through. If you're ready to tie off um, and you want to do the weaving in, just make sure you change direction. Let me show you what I mean by change direction. You want to go through one and then go through another, right? And then another. So every time with red angle weave, it's easy. It's just, um, you know, it's kind of automatic. Every time you make it through one pass, one complete rotation, you've made a turn just kind of by default. And so that's good enough. You can do that three times and trim it. If you really want to be sure if you're, um, or maybe if your thread is short and you can't really do three full rotations, um, a half hitch knot, a good place to do that is, um, right before a bicone, because you can pull the knot into your bicone. So let's do that really quick. I'm going to travel down through this last 8 OC bead. So like right there. And the way you do a hitch knot is you'll just bring your needle under, under the thread that's there. Try to keep it in place. Just pull it through. And you want to pull up a loop. And when the loop gets small like that, it's a little bit small, come back through it. And as you're tightening it, just try to keep it in the, you know, so that it's not crossing over a bead, because that's really easy to do, especially with white thread. So it's sitting right here for me. It's sitting right in that little pocket. And I'm going to go through the icon. And let's trim it. So grab your scissors, push down, pull up. And then I'm going to grab my needle off of over here where I left it earlier. And let's get the, the tail taken care of. So we've got our tail here. <laughs> Sharon in the chat, she's saying knots, naughty girl and knots. Yeah, I usually don't knot. That's a joke with um, a lot of our class um, friends that come every week. They know I don't like to do knots because knots are forever, right? Like, so, but you know, sometimes it's okay to do them. This design is so fast that honestly, if I had to redo it, it wouldn't take very long. So I'm thinking like, yeah, it's okay. But sometimes if you have to take something apart or repair it and you've got knots, it's going to be hard to, harder to do if you've done knotting. So here's our tail. I got a needle on there and um, we're exiting from that 8OC bead. And if you're wondering, you know, what that was, let's go back and show you. It was this one. It was this one. That was our tail here. And then we built and built and built, but it was left behind right there. So I'm just going to weave to exit from the next bicone. So let's go through the next bicone here. And the next thing you want to do is come up through the next 80, and there's that gap. We can add one more bead. Get that bead in there. And now's our chance to reinforce this side and weave in. So there it is. <laughs> Pretty good. Pretty easy too. So let's go through here and through our toggle. Back through those three. And again, I did three there just to give my toggle some wiggle so we can get into the ring easier. Travel the other side down. I'm um, pretty happy with the tension on this side, so I don't feel like I need to go through that again. But you could, you could, there's room, you can get through it. Let's just weave in. And so again, I'm just following the existing path. So 
And one thing you might be wondering is, um, when you get through these three right here, let me show you really quick. It can be really tempting from when you get to this spot to go through this one, but it's easier if you just go down through the next one. I think it would be okay if you skipped um, and you did that from this bead. Like if you jumped out of this bead and then went into that one, that would be okay. But what you don't want to do is go from this bead into that one. That will kind of warp the, um, the flat lay of your piece. I only did that by accident a couple times and then I immediately saw it and pulled it out. So you probably will too, but I just thought I'd mention it. In case as you're going along, you thought of it too. And so in this case, I just traveled down. Um, let's head back up now. I had something down there I was aiming for that I thought was loose and I fixed it. And so um, I'll show another half hitch knot. Now let's do one here. Actually, let's do let's do one after the three because it's um, potentially could be visible on one of the center segments, I feel like. So let's go up through one of these. Uh, exit from this third one here. It's another thing is I sometimes where you can see a knot, but so now I'm exiting from that 8 bead. And I'm just gonna go under and grab all those threads. Pull up a loop. Just like that. Let's go back and grab that loop and tighten that down. And it puts a little knot there. You can do it twice if you want. So now that knot is sitting just on the outside of that 80 seed bead. It's very unlikely that it will slide back up through the seed bead. And go through the bicone. And then just give it a little tug. It might pull your knot into the bicone, which is kind of handy. It took off my needle and I'm just gonna trim it. And again, to trim, you just wanna push down with your scissors, pull up with your thread. And you get a really beautiful bracelet. And then if you want, you can take you can take a head pin and you can take a jump ring and use that last crystal from your strand to make a little embellishment. And what I did is um, I just did a little wrapped loop and we have lots of classes on wrap loops, so um, you can message me later and I'll point you to a couple of them if you need to see it. We actually just did one last week, and I think it was posted Monday, so Monday was yesterday. So actually, I can point you to it now. Um, last week, we did an earrings party where we did a bunch of wrap loops like this. So if you want to go back and refer to that one, you can see how I did this. And so it's just a little wrap loop on a head pin with the crystal. I took a four millimeter jump ring and I attached it to the ring on my toggle. And that'll work on both big and small. There's a ring ring right here too, which you can put it on. That's a cool little extra that you can do to use up that last little crystal. Here's the other color. It came out really nice. I was loving that one. That one I used, a, looks like I used a ball head pen for that. I might've been working in a different location when I made that one. I grabbed these today, but there's others. You can find the ball ones. But that's it, yeah. So, um, Danielle, yeah. I have a couple of quick questions for you from the sidebar. There you um, go. Number one, was that limesicle that you were just using? Yes, mm -hmm. that's limesicle, the center one. Yes. It's a really and gorgeous you, color. It's gorgeous. I think it's sitting next to Caribbean. Yep, and the one that's next to it is Aqua Sea. Yep, okay. So that, that's the Caribbean Sea, that's perfect. And Danielle, on your strand, can you tell, um, what is the bicone count on that double strand? Yes, yeah, so. Um, I couldn't run to my wall and I knew yours was handier. So it's 42 pieces. Thank you. And you're gonna use exactly 41 if you work this length. You could buy two though and make it longer, but you'll, you'll only be able to get about the, um, the link that we showed earlier, the six and a quarter or so um, with one strand. If you want it to be longer, you just want to drop two of these. But then you'll have tons of leftovers. So maybe you can make some other stuff, right? Right. And Danielle, the all important question from everybody, you're a maker, you have sold jewelry. What would you price this at yourself if you were selling this bracelet? Um, I would probably go a, a little high because consider if you saw this in a department store, it's this real check crystal. 
um, people buy that stuff for weddings. I mean, it's high end. And this strand is going to run you. Um, if you know, if you're shopping, get your coupons. I did this myself just last week. I went and stacked my coupons over there. Um, you can do that. You can get your um, uh, rewards. If you get the rewards from Michael's, uh, they give you rewards vouchers. And those are stackable with the coupons. So get your cost down as much as you can. But you're looking at... And I'm just, I haven't done the, I actually have an Excel where I put in my cost to give me, and I put in a, a little factor for my labor and my time. Um, so I'm just kind of off the cuff, assuming about $12.99 here, um, you're going to go $65, $70 probably. The lowest I would uh, offer this would be like 50, maybe 45 if you didn't want to make a lot of money or if it's for a friend. But um, yeah, these are going to be a higher end, uh, especially for using these toggles because these toggles the large toggle uh, is going to run you um, probably like you know, 10 to $15. The small one's uh, $12.99. So you're going to look at um, about $6.50 in ads there. And that's before coupons. So um, that's great advice, Danielle. I, I think people seeing that this should be, you know, don't shortchange yourself and it should be $65 to $75 placed in a pretty box. It's definitely, um, it's a great gift and it's something you're right. Someone actually posted on the sidebar that they were going to make one to wear to a wedding. Yes. Um, and also on the sidebar, more than a few people today are just thrilled that they're not afraid of patterns anymore. So again, yeah. Daniel, you know, you just did such a great job um, teaching this class and um, we've got some new people who are um, hopefully going to jump on the jewelry making band wagon. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. And I always love getting compliments on the PDFs. I put a lot of heart into these. They take a little time to make, but I hope that what they can become for you is your memory jogger. And if you're a maker who sells, you can repeat for other customers stuff that they've seen in your shop and stuff that they've seen friends wear. They say, oh, so-and-so had that bracelet. I want one. And you know exactly how to make it again. So yeah, I'm, I love hearing that. It makes me happy. All right. Well, hey, I was going to say um, say bye to you guys really quick. And uh, I want to show you, actually, while I'm still on the mat, can I show you Saturday? I have Saturday handy. Um, so, oh, and I have something to tell you about Saturday, just in case anyone's about to go shop. I can save you a little bit of questions. Um, so here's the necklace we're going to teach on Saturday. And it is beautiful. It uses a brand new check last strand that I'm really proud of. I think it's gorgeous. And what we're going to do is we're going to work directly from the strand, but you notice the little crystals in there. Um, I want to show you really quick what I did. So I've made two of these now, one that went up to John Bead for the glamour shots and then one here for my demo sample. And I have not had to use all my crystals yet. So um, here's what I have left of the crystal colors that I felt really called out would I have in this strand. So I grabbed the black diamond, honey, jet, in Colorado Topaz. And look how much I have left after making two. But if you did not want to buy four crystal strands, um, you'll have enough if you just buy one crystal strand to make your design, probably even two of them. So um, you would just have, choose the one that's your favorite. They're all gonna match really beautifully. And you can do this design with just one strand of the round crystal. Cause you get uh, 21 pieces and it uses a fraction of that. So you'll get two necklaces out of it. It uses, um, I could, I should have done the count. It's about, you know, 10 or 11. So you can follow um, this design that we have in the handout. It's shown, let me show you. Actually. The design is, is like, it's described in, in detail. So you can completely duplicate what's here if you want. But of course you don't have to, you can, you can change it up. Like I was thinking of even changing the seed bead color. Um, and let me show you the seed beads. I use this mix. This is another Edo mix. It's the um, Topaz World or Royal Topaz. But the colors I used out of it are root beer and gold, metallic gold. But you could do this in silver. And look at all the little grays in there. Silver would look really awesome too. And it completely changed those little look. So you could take the CB2B you bought for this class and use it next week. Look at that. Maybe bring in the jet. So play with that. Go to the store, take a look at it. And if you like what's here, you can, you can duplicate it or you can, you can kind of go and try your own ideas. Honey is another one that would go very nice. Or choose your own color too, because there's a lot of colors in here. This is a very um, 
you know, it's intricate. The strand has a lot of brown. It has it even an olive a green there. Kind of like a, gosh, you could even do pops of green. I don't know. Try try what you um what you like. There's another color called opalite that I feel like would work. Let me show that real quick if I've got it. Um, yeah, opalite. Look at that. That's stunning. We were using that class last week. So um, that one will also work. So yeah, next Saturday, this Saturday, sorry. And that is um, at the same time that we had our class today. So let's bring, let's bring this back to me. <laughs> and um, I just wanted to wish you guys a great rest of your week. It's Tuesday, so it's weird. I feel like saying happy weekend, but I'll save that for Saturday. And see you Saturday for our um, Bohemia strands. All right, lots of love to you guys. Have a great rest of your week.